What's going on my broskies, my name is Toadski, back again, here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video, and in this video, we're doing something a little bit different once again, where uh, over the last couple of months or so, since I've been, you know, making tier lists and stuff like that, uh, basically every time I upload a tier list video, I always get a couple comments saying, you know, can you just, you know, let me let me know about free-to-play units that I should be getting, or what are the best free-to-play units in the game, what are the best Coliseum units, what are the best Fortnite units, you know, what should I be trying to aim for when farming in Treasure Cruise? Honestly, just straight off the bat, you should probably farm every free-to-play unit that you you possibly can if you are being a free-to-play player in the game you want to make sure you have as many units as possible so you have a wide variety of characters to use in certain pieces of content so honestly just straight off the bat you should be farming like any free-to-play content that you could possibly do however in terms of specific pieces of content in this video we're going to be dis uh, discussing the Colosseum there are obviously Colosseum units that are better than others that's with everything in the game so uh, in this video I want to give you guys some tips and just some information about what are the best Colosseum units you can farm for right now on One Piece Treasure Cruise Global. Now, the, the units that we talk about in this video might not be available at this current time, which is fine, but they will be cycling through over the next couple months or so. So definitely keep looking on the Coliseum schedule that will be constantly updated every couple of weeks so you guys know what characters are actually coming out. And hopefully this video gives you guys a little bit of pointers as to what characters you really should be aiming to farm for. So in this video, I'm going to go in through 10 Coliseum characters that I believe you guys should be trying to get. I've already gone through a full list of all the Colosseum characters available on Global, and I've just picked out 10 of the ones that I would use most often, and the ones that you guys should be aiming to get, because just because uh, I suggest a character on here, it might not be useful for a lot of other people who are pay to play and have a lot of rare recruit characters, because there are rare recruit characters that already do some of the things that some of these free to play characters do, but for the majority of these units, I suggest everyone should be farming for them, because they are going to be useful in a lot of upcoming content. Now, the first unit that I want to talk about is the number 10 spot, which is going to be Gecko Moria. Now, a lot of people who already know what this character does might be wondering why I put this character in this positioning, but we'll be discussing why that's the case in a little bit. So, this unit is a dex slasher driven character, can be put on all of those three teams. Uh, he has some pretty okay stats. Uh, well, his limit break is the most important thing about this character. And once the uh, maintenance hits, where it updates to our new version, he I'm not too sure if he'll get his limit break straight away, but over sometime in January, he will be getting his limit break and his limit break is very very good so his captain effect is a 2.25 times driven captain and he recovers three times his recovery and hp at the end of each turn so if you give him 100 recovery cotton candies uh he actually heals for a decent amount and because he's a driven captain you can partner him up with someone like v2 doflamingo so you can run some pretty cool teams with that uh his special ability changes his own orb into a matching orb into a dex orb and deals 300,000 fixed damage to one enemy and this maxes at a 16 turn cooldown however when you limit break him he goes down to a nine turn cooldown and he also gets a really really nice uh, effect where he has the double special activation so once you go ahead and uh, use his special ability if you have his potential ability maxed out it will be immediately up again. So you can use your special twice in the same turn and get 600,000 fixed damage. This is really good, especially if you are up against multiple enemies on a stage that have like high defense and low HP. You can use this special ability to just wipe out two of them. Or just the fact that it does 600,000 damage on uh, on a nine turn cooldown is pretty phenomenal, honestly. Uh, he also has some sailor abilities as well. If your captain is a driven character, boost his own attack by 100, that's whatever, and make strength orbs beneficial for himself. So as a sub, he has no negative orbs. But but honestly, out of all the Colosseum units in the game, you might actually see yourself using this character because that fixed damage can be quite key in a lot of pieces of content. Now, he's definitely not the best Colosseum unit in the game, but I can see a lot of people who are free to play be using this character for some piece of content here and there. So I would say this guy is probably the number 10 position on my personal list. The next unit that I want to discuss is going to be uh, Chin Jiao. So Col Colosseum Don Chin Jiao is actually a pretty okay unit. It's been a while since it's actually been released now on Global. Like He's been out for a pretty long time now. Uh, he is a Psy Fighter Powerhouse character. Uh, his stats are pretty okay for, for a Colosseum character. His Captain Effect boosts the attack of Powerhouse by 2.75 uh, until you hit uh, other than perfect. So, you know, as long as you keep hitting perfect, he's a 2.75 captain. Not the best captain in the game. He does recover a little bit of HP, but only 120 at the end of each turn. Uh, he has his Sailor abilities when you limit break him. I'm not too sure when he gets his limit break. I'm not even too sure if it's out right now on Global, but he adds two times his attack as additional typeless damage. So he does like the Sabo special as a Sailor ability with him at his limit break, which is pretty good. And his uh, special ability is really good too. On a 14 turn cooldown, cuts the HP of one enemy by 20 
25% and reduces damage taken. So he provides a health cut and damage reduction. And the thing about it is, and why I've listed this guy on this list, is because if you are free to play, a lot of the good free to play teams that can take on a lot of the more difficult content in the game are health cutting teams. And they allow you to just beat content easier, especially with characters like Invasion Garp. You can cut down the HP down to 25% or less, and then use his special and you instantly win. And for a lot of free to play people, this is one of the better units to do that because even if you do have to take a hit from an enemy, you can use his special to health cut the enemy, also tank a hit, and then you can, you know, stall up a couple more turns if you really need to. So I feel like this character will be pretty useful, if, especially if you are free to play and you want to take on some of the more difficult content in the game. This guy is definitely going to help you with that. Okay, so now we're talking about number eight here, which I've got Colosseum Rayleigh. Now, this would be this is a little bit this is a little bit hard to discuss because if you have really good free spirit characters, like if you have Luffy and Ace, if you have like Time Skip Luffy, anything like that, if you have a really good free spirit captain, I would rank this guy a little bit higher up in your list. This is just overall, but if you have really good free spirit characters, I would highly suggest farming this character up. He's gonna help out your teams a lot. So he is a Dex free spirit slasher. His stats pretty good overall for a for a free spirit uh, and uh, just a free-to-play character. Pretty good stats for a free-to-play character. His captain effect will boost the chances of you getting matching orbs, boost attack of free spirit and slashes by 2.5 times. Not an amazing captain effect, but if you're free-to-play, you might end up, you know, using him as a captain and then use, like, a Luffy as friend captain, and he can deal some pretty decent damage with that. Uh, his sailor ability is really great, reducing silence on himself or special bind on himself by three turns, and he also boosts attack uh, as another sailor ability as well. But the reason why this unit is good, obviously, is because of his special ability maxing out at 10 turns when you limit break this character obviously he does have his limit break and he cuts the hp of one enemy by 20 percent which is great reduces bind and special bind duration by three turns and boosts the chance of getting dex cyan int orbs for three turns and make them beneficial to free spirit characters for three turns so as i said if you have a really good free spirit team going 100%, this guy would be like higher up on your priority list to farm. But if you don't have really good free spirit units at this current time, I would still farm him up. He is still quite useful. He has really good utility, reducing bind and special bind, which is quite good. He reduces it on himself as well. So it means if you are in that situation, you can use his special to unlock the rest of your crew. So overall, I think he's just a great unit. Uh, what, did he, what does he have? He has quick damage reduction and slot bind self reduction. Five turns of reducing slot bind self reduction, again, is extremely useful. So I think in terms of free to play, this is going to be one of the the better units you can farm for and I believe if I remember correctly uh, he isn't actually that difficult to beat so I think a lot of people should be able to beat him and farm him up because he does have a really nice utility based special ability all right, so now we move on to the next position, which is going to be Shiryu. Now, a lot of people know I really don't like Shiryu, but this Colosseum Shiryu is amazing and very, very good for free-to-play content. Even if you're not free-to-play, I would still suggest farming up this character because for what he does, like no other rare recruit in the game, I guess, well, when Legend Brook comes out, he does something similar to this, but he's going to help you clear content pretty easily. So he's an int slasher driven character. Uh, stats are actually insanely good. 1500 attack and when you limit break him 1655 attack really decent health value as well obviously his recovery is negative for your crew so if you are basing your team off recovery probably not the best unit to run but amazing hp and attack for a free to play coliseum character he boosts the attack of slashes by two times at the start of the chain and then three times after your third perfect in a row. Pretty good slasher captain. However, I do believe Raid Zora or Clash Zora is a much better slasher captain, but still not too bad, honestly, as a captain effect for a Colosseum character. He has uh, the sailor abilities of boosting his own attack by 100 if he's the last attacker to attack in your chain, which is whatever. But that's not too bad. And his secondary one, which is amazing, reduces silence duration by one turn. Now, I believe this works for your whole crew. So he reduces your crew entire special bind duration by one turn very very useful crewmate ability to have and his special ability is also quite good unfortunately does not get any uh, cooldown reduction with his limit break but he instantly defeats enemies with HP equal to or lower 75 times his attack we'll go through that in a little bit removes poison completely on your crew and reduces damage received by 50% for three turns he does three extremely useful effects so taking a look at the calculations here, if you actually take the 1505 and you multiply it by 75, this means that when you activate the special of Shiryu, any enemy on the enemy side of the field that has less HP than that will be instantly defeated by his special ability. Now, if you go ahead and max limit break him and give him max candies, so you give him an extra 200 because of candies, and then you multiply it by 75, any unit that has that much HP or less will be instantly KO'd when you activate the special ability. Now that's just one of the great aspects of his special ability, and that's typically 
typically a special, like that part of his special, isn't really why you use this character. Typically, you want to use him for a high turns of damage reduction, so you can do three turns of damage reduction, which is great. It can, you know, be the, uh, you know, the difference between winning and losing a fight. And also, he completely removes poison. Uh, just a free-to-play unit that completely removes poison is extremely key to have. Always good to have a poison remover because there are pieces of content where you actually will need to bring him. Typically, like training forests where they have poison is going to be quite annoying because you have to be in the content for a long time. So I would highly suggest if you are free to play, you would 100% need to farm this character. And whenever his limit break becomes available, definitely limit break him as well because he has very good crewmate abilities, really good stats, and just an amazing unit all around. Okay, so now we're moving on to the next one, the number six position, I believe, which is going to be Colosseum Necromamashi Cat Viper. This character is, he, 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 honestly, when he came out, I believe he was probably the best Colosseum unit in the game on his release. But the fact that Strikers and Powerhouse teams have kind of like drifted down a little bit, they're no longer like the best teams to run in the game. I wouldn't think he's like the best unit to farm for, but it's kind of like what I said with Rayleigh. If you have really good Powerhouse or really good Striker teams, I would highly suggest farming up this character because he's so useful for that. And even if you don't have good striker or powerhouse teams, this guy can actually help you out with that because he's just a great unit overall. Strength striker powerhouse character. Stats pretty good once you limit break him once again. Unsure if his limit break is actually out on global right now. He boosts the attack of strength by 2.5 times and then boosts HP of striker and powerhouse by 1.25. Not a very good captain effect. You're not going to be using him that often at all. He just has stat boost for his crewmate ability, so not really that useful. But the, the best part about him is obviously his special ability on a 9 turn cooldown does 50 times his attack in fixed typeless damage to one enemy that ignores damage negating abilities and barriers so again really good for enemies that have high defense low hp or damage reducing effects or barriers and stuff like that extremely useful the second part of his special will go ahead and state that if enemies have a full debuff protector or just a delay protector either one of those two he will go ahead and boost the attack of strikers and powerhouse characters by 1.75 times for one turn and no matter what character it is, it can be Strike or Powerhouse or any other class character, changes all orbs including block into matching on a 9 turn cooldown. For a special ability like that, he had to be on this list. Even on Japan, he is definitely like in the top 10 list. Like he just can be used on so many different teams just because of the fact that he gives you guaranteed full board of orbs. And on top of that, you know, if, if you do run Strikers and Powerhouse characters, you just get a type boost on top of that as well. And obviously back in the day when Strikers and Powerhouse were the top of the meta with, you know, uh, V2 Luchi and Necromamashi, you know, those guys, were, those were the best in the game, obviously. Obviously, you can't use this guy with Necromamashi, but even with like Lucy as a captain, you can run like a striker team with Lucy. This character is insane, and 100% you should be farming this character up. Uh, one of the best free play units to run in the game. So for me, number five is going to be Colosseum Pedro. Now, if you actually have a really good cerebral team, this is very similar to Colosseum Rayleigh. If you have like really good cerebral characters, like you have Katakuri, you have Legend Robin, you have Six Plus, uh, Six Plus Law, the the quick version of Law. If you have like any of those legends, this guy would be a much higher unit in terms of priority to farm because he is really powerful for cerebral teams. But we'll go through him real quick. He's a size cerebral shooter character. Stats are actually pretty okay. Once again, his captain effect boosts the attack of cerebral by two point. 5, and also makes their sign int orbs have beneficial slot effects, which is actually a pretty good captain effect. Two of the seven natural orbs are beneficial. 2.5 captain is a little lacking, but still not a terrible captain effect overall, just because getting more matching orbs means overall you're going to be doing more damage to the enemy, of course. Now, his special ability is the key, the key thing here. 13 turn cooldown with limit break reduces the current HP by 95%. This is actually really good if you have uh, Legend Inu Arashi as well. If you run Legend Inu a lot, this guy is going to be a key unit to definitely get your hands on. He also deals 50 times his attack in typeless damage to all enemies that ignores barriers and defensive effects. Great having AoE damage. He actually does some pretty decent damage output there. And on top of this, boosts the color affinity of cerebral characters by 1.75 for two turns. So for most people, this isn't going to be that useful. But as I said, if you have a very good cerebral team going, this is going to be a high priority unit to definitely farm for. Uh, but in terms of free to play, I don't think there's that many like terms in type like but in terms of free to play, I don't think there's that many situations where you're going to be needing this character. But as I said, it's just that, that situation where if you are starting to build a powerful cerebral team, as I said, characters like Katakuri, Legend Robin, Six Plus Law, this guy's going to be amazing for those crews, especially with that sailor ability, making Psy Orbs beneficial for cerebral characters, enabling them to get way more matching orbs, which is so useful to have. And his abilities with Enrage, obviously we know with cerebral characters, Enrage is going to be powerful. When you use the special ability of Pedro, it reduces the health. This actually 
will activate the Enrage of him as well, giving him more damage, and also Slopine Self Reduction by 5 turns. He has a great Limit Break, he has a great Special, he has a passable Captain Effect, and he's an amazing crewmate to have. Definitely deserving of it being in the top 5 best Colosseum units on Global right now. Okay, so now we're moving on to the number 4 positioning, which is going to be Colosseum Lucy. We already know how good this unit is. It's actually been nearly a year since his release, and he's already this high up on the Colosseum listing. He is so powerful to have, especially if you are free to play in this game. He is a Dex Fighter Free Spirit character. He has pretty okay stats, good attack value either way, really good attack value. His uh, Captain ability will boost the recovery of Strength Dex Quick by 1.2, and boosting the attack of Strength Dex Quick by 3.25 after 3 perfects in a row. His Captain ability is okay. You can partner him up with obviously Legend Lucy or you can run someone else as your captain and run this guy as a sub on a Legend Lucy team. Uh, that works exceptionally well and one of the reasons why this character is honestly so good is just because of the fact that Legend Lucy is a thing and how good he is as a, as a captain obviously. Uh, so this guy partners up really well with Legend Lucy. If you have your own Legend Lucy you need to have this guy maxed of course. He's so goddamn useful with that special ability uh, maxing out at a 13 turn cooldown with his limit break will cut the HP of one enemy by 20% that goes through barriers and damage negating effects. Obviously, anything that does that is extremely useful to have. And we know like Legend Garp has that similar ability as well. We already know how good he is as a sub anyway. Uh, changes the orbs on the top row into strength, middle row into quick, bottom row into dex. Now, the fact that he changes those certain orbs on the certain rows doesn't really matter. It's just the fact that on a Lucy team, you're guaranteed to get a full board of orbs because your captains are going to be obviously double Lucy, which is going to be double strength. And then the rest of them are going to be guaranteed as beneficial anyway because of Lucy's captain effect. Now, if you do not have your own Legend Lucy, you can obviously run someone else as a captain who's strength, or even if you're running someone as a captain with a with a friend Lucy, that even, even it doesn't even matter if that character is strength or not, you're still getting five of your six matching orbs, and on top of that, he's boosting the orb effects of everyone by 1.75, so you're getting a full board of orbs, a 1.75 orb boost, and a 20% health cut that goes through barriers, like... This guy's insane. He's 100% a must farm. Uh, definitely on his release. I think at the time of his release, he probably was the best and the most key Colosseum character to have. And his Colosseum is actually really not that difficult either. They've made him relatively easy to beat because they want to make sure that a lot of free to play people can actually have this guy. And you can farm him on the lower difficulties, of course. Yes, you need to farm this guy. He is amazing to have. Now, in my personal opinion, I put this guy in the number three spot, which is going to be Colosseum NL. My god, Colosseum NL, they made him so powerful. And especially if you if you have characters like V2 Doflamingo, or even if you don't have V2 Doflamingo, you can run a pretty good driven team with this guy on it, and you can do some pretty cool stuff. Now, this guy is a strength shooter driven character. Stats, pretty good overall. He obviously has his limit break on his release. Uh, really good stats with his limit break stats. Uh, his captain effect boosts the attack of driven proportional to the crew's current HP. 2.75 times at max HP, and 1.3 times recovery. So yeah, as we said... Uh, with uh, max HP, you get 2.75 times attack, and with 1 HP, you only get 1.5 times attack. So he's not the greatest driven captain. Obviously, as I said before, uh, with uh, with the Shiryu captain effect, you've got Raid Zoro. Raid Zoro boosting slashes and driven. So already free to play, you can run your Clash Zoro as your captain, you can have a friend V2 Doflamingo, and you've already got the, the makings of a really powerful driven team. Now, the reason why I've listed this guy so high is literally just because of his OP special ability, which changes his own orb into strength. He reduces your crew's attack down and chain multiply limit, and paralysis by five turns and if your captain is a driven character add 0.7 to the chain this guy is amazing he's the best utility character you need a guy you guys need to get this guy maxed out uh i believe yeah there's only one other character on this list that would kind of rival him in terms of utility and what he does for your crew uh, and that's going to be the number one positioning. But yeah, this guy, you need to farm him up. The fact that he reduces attack down, which is one of the most annoying debuffs to deal with in Treasure Cruise right now. Chain Multiply Limit, which can be quite annoying. For Driven Teams, it's not that big of a deal, I wouldn't say. But still, it's going to happen sometimes, and you're going to be really thankful that you have a character like this uh, Colosseum NL. And then you've got Paralysis, which again, one of the most annoying debuffs. And he reduces all of those by five turns. And then he adds 0.7 to the chain on top of that. So not only are you're removing a bunch of different debuffs by five turns he also gives himself a matching orb and he makes your crew do a crap ton more damage because of the chain boost you need to farm this guy up uh in fact uh, as a sailor he actually adds some stats to your driven characters as well 40 additional attack and 25 additional recovery the recovery doesn't really matter that much but uh, the 
2.5, uh, the, the 40 extra attack is actually pretty goddamn useful to have. What are these abilities? Pinch healing. Pinch healing's okay, but for driven teams, it's not really that big of a deal. But as you've seen with how powerful his special ability is, you need to farm him up, especially if you guys already have the really good makings of a good driven team. This guy's going to just add to that and make it even more powerful. Now, in the number two positioning, I put the Dex Coliseum Kid. Now, this guy only recently came out on Global, so you guys already know how good he is, and I know a lot of people have already got him maxed out right now, but I just want to go through him again and want to reiterate why he's actually so good. So, Dex, Striker Shooter character. His stats, pretty decent overall. Obviously, has his Limit Break. Uh, Captain Effect, boosts the attack of Strikers and Shooter characters by 2.5 and deals five times his attack and Dex damage to all enemies at the end of the turn. Uh, again, it's, it's a Captain Effect that's just okay. You can partner it up with some other things and make it okay, but honestly, uh, in most situations, you're not going to be using him as a captain. His sailor ability is not too bad as well, which is stat boost to dex characters and striker characters, and his special ability obviously is the main reason why he's so good, which does 5 hits of random dex damage to random enemies and reduces the special cooldown of strikers and shooters by 2 turns, and if your captain is either a striker or a shooter, he does 350 times his attack and dex damage to all enemies at the end of the turn for the next two turns. And the reason why uh, I would list him so high is literally because of his ability here with the cooldown reduction. It will start maxed out at the start of the fight. It's, he reduces his own cooldown by 11 turns on a 12 turn cooldown. So you just need level one cooldown or run like the Blackbeard ship and you can have his special maxed out at the start of a run. Uh, so you can go ahead and use it straight away, reduce two turns of your strikers and shooters and immediately start just killing shit with his special ability. He's insane. Honestly, there's not much else to really say about it. 350 times attack, you can add so much goddamn damage. So with his limit break, 1525. If you're adding cotton candies, which I would highly suggest, 1725 times 350, 603,000 damage at the end of the turn for the next two turns to all enemies. And because it is dex damage, if you are up against a quick enemy, you can actually go ahead and make that doubled. So it's 1.2 million damage against any quick enemy. And obviously, you have to add defenses on top of that as well. If they've got high defense, you're going to have reduced damage and stuff. But you also have to take in mind, if you are up against a strength boss, that is actually divided by two. And you're only getting 301,000 damage uh, at a maximum. So, it is what it is. Uh, Colosseum Kid is going to enable you to just just do lots of damage where it just it just comes out of nowhere honestly doing 600,000 damage over two turns it's basically 1.2 million damage and you know obviously in the good situations you can get more damage or in some situations you're going to get less damage but i definitely think he's deserving of the number two positioning uh, i think coliseum nl might might be close to that number two positioning but now let's go ahead and talk about the number one free to play coliseum unit you guys should be farming for and obviously, it's none other than Colosseum Neptune. I believe, as it stands right now, he is the best Colosseum unit that you guys should be farming for in One Piece Treasure Cruise Global. Let's talk about him. He's an int cerebral powerhouse character. At, uh, at With his limit break, he gets five socket spots. A lot of these characters have really high amount of socket spots when you limit break them. Great stats overall for a free-to-play character. He boosts the attack of all characters by two times. 1.5 times EXP and recovers 5 times his recovery at the end of each turn. So if you guys are missing Rare Recruit Neptune, you need to get this guy 100%, allowing you to level up so much quicker. And that's one of the main reasons why I list him this high on this list as the number one spot, because he is a, he's, he's an EXP captain. You need an EXP captain. He's really good for Fortnite, allowing you to level up so much quicker, which obviously gets your stamina back quicker, which obviously increases your cost, and cost is going to be quite important with uh, version 9.0 when we get it in the next few months or so. So yes, you, you need to get this guy as a captain. Even You don't even have to max his special. You can just get him as a captain, and you can get more EXP. So that's one of the great benefits of this character straight off the bat. Now, he does have some pretty good abilities here. When you when you go ahead and limit break him, boost the attack of Cerebrals or the stats of Cerebrals by 50. And the secondary one, when any other character uses a special, reduces his own cooldown by one turn, which is actually quite good because he does have a reasonably high cooldown. He's a 15 turns in... Another best thing about this character is he's special. Honestly, his special is so busted for what he does. He reduces despair and attack down by five turns, kind of like what we had with NL before, reducing five turns of really annoying debuffs. He reduces despair and attack down and reduces enemies' resilience buffs by five turns as well. So just on top of that, he just does so many different things. Reduces the defense of all enemies by 80%, which means you can stack it with a conditional booster on top of this, which makes him even better, and also amplifies the effect of orbs by 1.75 times for cerebral and powerhouse characters for three turns. Now, the thing about this is, I didn't actually realize it till I was playing around in a couple of different dungeons, the reduction of defense by 80% that he actually provides is for three turns as well. So 
that means you can run like a multi-turn defense down conditional booster and it will work with uh, obviously if you're not killing them in one turn but yeah that's awesome and also the fact that it's a 1.75 all boost for three turns for two of the most un like amazing classes in the game powerhouse not so much nowadays but cerebral Bro, it's just like Cerebral didn't even need this much more support. And if you guys know about me, I love Katakuri. And I use this guy on Katakuri teams like exclusively. I use him all the time on a Katakuri team. And he's just the best character that you need to be farming for in terms of the Colosseum. Reducing despair, attack down, resilience, and defense reduction as well. Uh, and then also having the, the orb boost. Bro, this character is insane. You need to get this guy. And as I said, you don't even need to go ahead and, uh, and you know, max his special if you don't really want to. Although I would strongly advise it. Because his captain effect is mainly what a lot of free-to-play people are going to be using him for. is because he's an EXP captain. And he definitely is deserving of the number one positioning of the best Colosseum units you guys should be farming for. So anyways, hopefully you guys learned something here and hopefully you guys did enjoy the video and if you guys did, make sure to leave a like and if you want to stay up to date with all the content I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But on that guys, I'll see you guys within the next video.